I want to look at this first reading today because we're now 10 generations from where we were yesterday. Just yesterday, we had the first murder of Cain and Abel, and a lot has happened in between that time. Uh, well, we start at the end of the reading that Eve bore another son, and she named him Seth. She named him Seth because Seth was in the image and likeness of his father, Adam. Which is interesting because Adam was made in the image and likeness of God, and now their third child we learn about is in the image and likeness of his father. And Seth, although we know very little about Seth, we know a lot about Seth's descendants. Because Cain goes off, you know, gets married, and I'm sure one of his sisters, that wasn't much of all surround at the time, <laughs> and Seth uh, also marries and has children. And ten generations from Seth, we have Seth's great, 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 great grandson, whose name is Noah. Noah is of the line of Seth. Coming down from the line of Noah, we will come to Abraham. From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. From Jacob, we'll come down to the children of Israel. And we'll see that Jesus himself, his sacred humanity, descends from the line of Seth, who is in the image and likeness of his father Adam. So Seth is pretty important now that we're ten generations from Adam and Eve, and we have the situation with Noah. You know, when God bargained with Abraham about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, our Lord and Abraham had this long conversation with Abraham is pleading for the Lord not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because his nephew Lot lived there and a lot with his wife and their two daughters. And God eventually comes down in his bargaining with Abraham that he promises Abraham that he can find ten people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, he will not destroy it. Of all the people, he finds only eight. They get down to ten. I'm sorry, he finds only four. And the four he finds are Lot, his wife, and the two kids. And they flee. And even Lot's wife is disobedient because she turns back, and we know she turns into a pillar of salt. So the Lord was willing to withhold his hand if he could find just ten people, and he only found four. In today's first reading, our Lord sees that the only ones he can find are eight people. Noah, his wife, Noah's three sons and their three wives. And so he was going to recreate, or not create fully because things are still there, but he's going to bring about new issue through Noah, his wife, and their three children because of the evil that has so perpetuated at that time. They had forgotten the Lord already, just ten generations from them. Now this beautiful story, in many ways it is a very beautiful story, we learn about growing up in religious education, one of the most famous of stories, because it deals with a lot of animals, and collecting the animals two by two, but we forget the fact of just what the flood did, right? The flood wiped out everybody else who was not on the boat. But there is incredible significance to this because this is a prefigurement of two sacraments. Two sacraments. The first one is the sacrament of baptism. And I brought here the order of baptism of children. And because when we're blessing the water for baptism, we make reference to today's feast, or today's reading. It says, O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. An end of vice and the beginning of virtue. So what does the flood do? The flood wipes away sin and vice, and then brings to salvation those who are in virtue. And this is a prefigurement of baptism, which is going to wash away the sins of the world, the gift of baptism, which then brings you into the ark of the church, and you are saved from the flood of death. And so baptism becomes that, uh, is that fullness of what was prophesied of the washing away of vice, the washing away of sin 
in order to bring about the regeneration of new life, the sparing of those who've entered the waters of baptism and have entered the church. That's first. Second one that we get here, if we notice and look at it, and we didn't have the full complete reading today, so if we were to see when God tells Noah to get his household, he will say to him, your wife, your three sons and their wives. So there's also here a prefigurement of the sacrament of holy matrimony. God preserves the beauty of holy matrimony. God will always speak of us, his people, as his bride and he took the groom to his bride. And he always spares the, his bride. And so he prefigures this by the sparing of Noah and his wife, their sons and their wife. And I pulled out the sacrament of matrimony book. And I was looking at the nuptial blessing this morning, and we see once again a reference to Noah. In the blessing of the couple that happens after the Our Father, the priest prays, O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not fortified by, forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood nor washed away by the flood. You see the beauty of marriage being preserved and being made new again in the washing. God raises marriage to the level of a sacrament. So much is happening here in this first reading <laughs> in the, in the, in the, uh, that I can go on with various other different angles on this reading to look at it, but I want to look at those two prefigurements of these two sacraments of God preserving the beauty, beauty and dignity of holy matrimony, and God prefiguring the beauty and the power of the gift of, of baptism. And I think two very important things for our own day and age in a culture. How many young people are not having their children baptized anymore? Some of you suffer because your own grandchildren have not yet been baptized. And what a great suffering that is, knowing that they have not yet entered into the waters to be washed in the waters of baptism, adopted by God and made heirs to the kingdom. It's more than just a little ceremony. It's very important that they go get to the waters of baptism and be brought onto the ark, <laughs> onto the ark of God. And so we need to be promoting and speaking more about the beauty and the power and the importance of baptism both in our religious education, the kids are growing up, so they have that understanding that when they do have families, they make sure they get children baptized, but also in our own conversations with others, how to speak about the beauty and the power of baptism that would make our children want to baptize the grandchildren and understand the importance of that holy sacrament. And secondly, under attack in our day and age is the holy matrimony is under grave attack. And people no longer regard marriage as something sacred and beautiful. And we see a society trying to redefine marriage. And they always say, God, you know, we, we can't redefine marriage because God defined it. We have no authority to redefine what God defined. That is between one man and one woman. That marriage is something sacred, something beautiful, which expresses the love between God and each and every soul, between Christ and his church. So today, we ask the Holy Spirit to inspire us, to give us great understanding and wisdom and knowledge about these two beautiful sacraments of baptism and holy matrimony, and to give us the grace to be able to speak so beautifully about them that we will be able to draw other souls to the waters of baptism and draw people to the beautiful holy sacrament of holy matrimony, not just marriage, not just matrimony, holy matrimony, truly holy marriages based in unity with God. Just as I say that, I have one last thought. My theology professor, moral theology professor, he was from the South, and he, would, he was an old man. He would say to us, now remember, in the holiest sacrament of matrimony, it's not two, it's three. It's husband, wife, and God, and God wants to be boss. So always to subject everything to our Lord and God. May God bless you. And Mary keep you.